after I finally calmed down. I what happened? You got him. Oh, go ahead. What? You got a fight with somebody? Uh, my boy. Because <laughs> he lied. You know, don't lie. I don't like liars. You can't lie. The number. I need mean, to just say, hey, JP, over the bridge, we'll catch the bus. Yeah. Don't tell me to like before the bridge, and then we get there, and oh, we got to go over the bridge? Yeah. Because now, now, you know, now that aggravates me. I said, Tommy, all this time it took us from the bay to walk over the bridge, we could have walked back to the seaside by the beach, went down to the parking lot, and got a ride. So now I went all out of my way because he wanted to look at the bay and take pictures. But the ocean wasn't good enough for you. <laughs> so I, I, I was fuming. This guy always messes up with everything. I had a good something told me he's gonna mess it up today. And but you're the one hitchhiking on the side of the road. No, he kept walking. He went right by me and kept walking because he knew I, I told him I go, bro. This bus stop is not by the bridge. Pair are getting punched in the face. I'm throwing you over this bridge. Because I'm not in the mood. <laughs> so I got to the bridge. I talked to the guy that owns that crab shop over there. He's like, I think the bus stops here because a lot of people wait for the bus. So I'm waiting. He finally, 20 minutes later, finally gets over the bridge. He don't say nothing. He just keeps walking, walking straight, walking straight, walking straight down. Because he knows. I'm on fire. I actually calmed down a lot now. Yeah. Never again with this guy, you know. You say that now, but in a week. Well, no, what happened is, you know, he's good people. He's a good friend of mine, you know. And I, I live in Newark. So I got sick and tired of Newark. I said, let's spur the moment. Let's go down to shore. Fuck yeah. He's got no money. I give him 60 bucks yeah. to get down there and have fun. I buy the beers. I buy the lunch and dinners. You know, we have a good time. You know, we're in the bars, bar hopping, checking out the chicks and all that, you know. Talking to a few cool people, some surfers down there. Having a, a fantastic time. But then he had to go and blow it. You know, and he's always like that. You can't let other people get your kicks for you. You can't yeah. let other people ruin your good time. That's true. So, I said, okay, you know something? Forget it. It's over with, you know? Now we have plans to come down, not this week, next week, but I'm coming down with my boy Gotti and his girl and his kids. And we were going to stay at his friend's house down at Seaside. He was going to take a, uh, hook us up with a couple rooms for the night. And make a good time out of it, you know, over the weekend. Because the kids love the motor rides and stuff. Yeah. So now I'm debating whether to take this guy because his, his girl drives the Uber. She does all the books and stuff. Uh -huh. So I told her, I'll pay for the gas and whatnot, the tolls, I don't care. 50 bucks, 100 bucks, George gas tolls, I don't care. Money ain't the issue. So they all came for it. Now, due to the fact that I'm pretty much the Grand Poobah out of the three of us, because we're the three, the three of us. All for one. Yeah. So I pretty much make the calls. Nice. He's not coming down with us next time we come down, because now, Gotti, I'll be with Gotti and his girl. Yeah, put him on probation for one trip and see if he rises up and behaves, and then bring him down next time. He ain't gonna learn. He, he does them mind. He got some kind of pills he takes, man. Yeah, well, that's Makes the problem. Makes messed man. up, you know? You can't have a good time when you're messed up on pills, man. But you can't do no pills. That's all right, though. You know what I mean? It's all... I mean, I blew up steam because I was mad, you know? I just don't... Like, I don't anger. know where you're going, let me know. I understand that, but you got anger issues, obviously. Uh, we no. had a good time until we blew it, man. It's always a good time until it ain't. And, and, and I saw the alcohol. This is not the first time It always goes bad. It yeah, always well, goes bad. No, we were drinking last night, but not heavy, you know. 
because I really don't drink. And, uh, you know, it was a special occasion. You know, I would sit down and have a couple beers, you know? Yeah. The most I had was maybe eight beers. That's nothing. That's nothing. Considering I was an alcoholic, but, you know, I haven't touched a drink. This is the first time I from? touched a drink in nine years. You're from Newark? Yeah, I'm originally from West Milford, up the country, up north. What'd you do when you were a kid up there? I lived up in West Melbourne. All they did was hike, hunting, fishing, camping. And you know how to skin a rabbit? Oh, hell yeah. Deer, Do you eat rabbit? Venison. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. Stew or what? Yeah, oh, rabbit stew's the best, man. I, I, try, I tried the Canadian geese. It, it, it's gamey, you know? It's nasty and oily. Well, not only oily, it's gamey. It's like, it's like, you know, like, I don't know. I don't chew rubber, but... Yeah. The expression is <laughs> like imagine. chewing rubber. <laughs> as far as the venison is good, you know, squirrels are good, rabbits are good. Like pussy lips, kind of. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> all right? Sometimes they're a little chewy. <laughs> Yo, but I got, I'm into that. I want to uh, start... Um, I used to, uh, you know, if you see a deer, you know, a, a deer roadkill or something... Like a fresh one with a rack on it. Right, you can't, so you, you can't just be, you can't just leave that on the side of the road. Right, nice. you got to be careful because once the urine sac is broken, it destroys the meat. Yeah, yeah. So it depends I mean, as on far where as the skin and the, the antlers and oh, you know, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Oh, even yeah. the and even the bladder too for making oh shit for making drum. Well, I keep the antlers because I take them home with me because I take them in my tree stand up. And you grab them, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have two. Oh, the bucks come out like crazy, man. They're like, oh, we gonna get these little does, baby. I want this dough. Them big ass bucks come out, boom. So what else did you hunt? How did you hunt? With the baby gun when you were a kid? Or nah, I used a shotgun. Nice. And then what? Prop gauge. And then when you moved out of there, what, how old were you? Well, then, then I, Got mixed up in the city. I got mixed up with a bad bunch of people and started robbing cars and houses and stuff back in the 80s. You know, yeah, 90s. With a screwdriver? Huh? With just a screwdriver? Huh. Just whatever. I used to teach cars nowadays. I mean, back in the day, it was a lot easier. Oh, back in the day, it was easy. All you had to do was just reach underneath the dashboard and disconnect the three wires and touch them together. Yeah. I remember hot wire in the car. I pushed it out of the guy's driveway. This is what happened. I pushed it out of the guy's driveway. It's like two o'clock in the morning. I just come back from the city doing coke. That's when drugs were good back then in the days. And this guy comes out on his porch in his underwear. Oh, where you going, my car? Give me back my car. <laughs> oh, shit. So I get down on 23. My boy is like, yo, I think the cops are behind you. Oh, shit. I'll find out I'm going to blow this red light. If I blow the red light, he blows the red light, it's a cop. So, sure enough, I blow a red light. He blows the red light, boom, the cherries come on him. Oh, boy, it is a cop. So, I'm in this, I think it was a 50, 57 Buick Skylark. Nice. Now, I knew nothing about cruise control. I guess I must have hit cruise control on that little clicker thing where you had the cruise control next thing you know, my boy's like, yo, you gotta slow down. I look at the speed I'm, I'm doing 160. Jesus Christ. I even, don't even feel like it. So now I'm cruising and cruising. This guy's behind me. He's trying to pass me. So I'm swaving left and right because I don't want him to pass me. So I go up a road I know. I'm flying. I lost him around two turns. That's when I should have slammed the car and popped and jumped out and ran into the woods because you would have never found me because that's wooded area. And I know the woods by the back of my hand. Daylight or dark. That's stupid me, I just keep going. So now, oh jeez, there's two cars like this blocking the road. Like this. I'm like, Pat, put your feet on the dash, I'm blowing this bucket. <laughs> the speed on the road. All of a sudden, they get up to him, you see the two cars just back away and let me go. <laughs> Because I wasn't going to stop, bro. I would have hit him. My plan was to hit the right one a little towards the passenger side so I spin him around and the car that's behind him will, will, will block him from going because he hit the police car. Yeah. The police car would hit the other police car. And 
that would give me some more time. Instead of me, I get on Gold Road, which is a dumb move because it's a hill that goes like this. You're going up a hill, there's no way you're getting away from the police now. Yeah. So, I said, the hell, I'm gonna pull over. They told me to pull over, pull over. Next thing you know, 20 cops are there, cut you. Put your hands where I can see, my dad, I did. I'm shitting brats on my own, Jesus Christ. I've never seen so many guns pulled on me before. <laughs> we get back to the station. The detective goes, Mr. Caller. I got a stack of folders like this. And, and something tells me they got your name all over. We're going to hook you up to this machine. And all I want you to do is just say yes or no. Did you, yes, did you take the card? No, did you, uh, yes, 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 Most of them, but I lied because I, I got um, one house that I robbed. Something bugged me, I'm, man, that, something doesn't look right, and they had like a reclining chair, and on the side of the pocket was like this weird looking book, and that's what caught my attention. So I take the book out, I open it up, there's two bars of gold and two bars of silver. That's a 9.99999 Oh, Gold, gold, silver, silver, gold, gold. Here goes the book. I leave. Well, son, some ouch catches in my eye. Damn, man. Don't look right by a coat rack. I want the coat rack. There's a gun up there. Oh, nice. It's a nice piece. I'm gonna leave the piece. I don't want the piece, you know what I mean? I said, ah, I could sell it in the city. So I took the piece. Would you believe that guy never reported the gold or the gun? Oh, shit. So something told me there. And then the one house I broke into, I opened the bottom of the drawer. This guy must have been um, military, I guess, because he had a wall full of like hot wheel tra um, cars. They weren't like hot wear cars, they were tanks and jeeps and, and military, military equipment, you know, cars. So I opened the bottom drawer. He's got this big ass box full of fireworks. I mean, an a, a old big box of fireworks. So I'm thinking to myself, okay. I takes them, once again, they weren't reported stolen. So that's when I. starts everything because oh, it's legal it and they over. and they want it legal and they want it to start problems and they want people it's to be like fucked up yeah it's like it gives the government uh -huh. something to do a uh -huh. way to make money parole puts you somewhere in it whether it be in a drug infested area where they know you're going to relapse or alcohol uh, there's a liquor store around every corner and that's why they don't care about legalizing weed now either because they know this is going to cause more problems Right. And then they'll have more solutions. So I violated. There's, there's, there's three violations. You get a 12 month. You do 12. You get no good behavior, bad behavior. You do 12 months straight. 12, 14, 18. Huh? I did my 12 month violation. Boom. I get back out. I get caught drinking again. Boom. They put 